Hello, welcome to another edition of Humble Theology. My name is John, and in this series, we're looking at the Westminster Confession of Faith. We are in chapter 5, dealing with God's providence, and we are in section 6, uh, looking at God's providence over the ungodly and wicked. So let's read that, and then we'll kind of dissect it there a little bit. So section 6 of chapter 5, As for those wicked and ungodly men, whom God, as a righteous judge, for former sin, does blind and harden from them, he not only withholds his grace, whereby they might have been enlightened in their understandings and wrought upon in their hearts, but sometimes also withdraws the gifts which they had and exposes them to such objects as their corruption make occasion of sin, and withal gives them over to their own lusts, the temptations of the world, and the power of Satan, whereby it comes to pass that they harden themselves, even under those same means which God uses for the softening of others. So a lot going on there. It's a pretty big section, but let's let's unpack it a little bit. So the wicked, the ungodly, uh, in theological circles, you would say possibly the reprobate, those God passes over. Um, the, the Israelites are saved because um, God in his justice and judgment passes over them in judgment. Well, this is kind of the reverse. Uh, we say that of God's blessing of salvation, the Holy Spirit effectively regenerates the saved. The Holy Spirit awakens and gives a new heart to those who belong to God and via the means of the preached word. Um, now, that, that effectiveness of what God does by his Holy Spirit, when you look at the wicked, the, the, those passed over, it just means that God doesn't send his Holy Spirit to them. Now, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. You know, Romans 9, big distinction there about God's election and how all this works. Uh, so I exhort you to go back and read Romans 9. Uh, actually 8, 9, 10, 11, or maybe even the whole book of Romans. But anyway, uh, what the confession is getting across here is that God, because their sins, they're in their sins. God didn't give them sin. They were born in their sins. And in these former sins, it, sin naturally blinds and hardens them. So God may withhold his grace so he withholds the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not go to them in a regenerative manner, whereby they would have been given enlightenment and understanding and a renewed heart. They do not receive those things. But again, it, in sin, it's not like they're looking for them. In sin, they don't want them. In sin, they flee from God because uh, they don't want their sins exposed and such. Okay, so that's in the first section there. So God does not regenerate them. So uh, some people would say, well, when Christ came and died for sins, he died for all the sins of the world. Like there's a universal salvation out there which puts all of mankind on this type of thin tight wire type thing, this neutral tight wire. And you have to decide whether you're going to stay on it for God or fall off into sin. You know, and so you end up deciding salvation. But, but the confession is saying, you know, no, God does that. And we looked at election and his providence in the earlier section. So the confession, go back, read those sections. Um, but here it's clarifying that those who are sinners left in their sin are basically what happened to them well god did not give them the regeneration of his holy spirit they were not given hearts of flesh okay now even in that condition then as a mere sinful human being the confession goes on to say but sometimes also withdraws the gifts with which they had so common grace not everybody is as evil as they possibly could be. You know, some are pretty close, but anyway, tangent. 
he may withdraw from them the common grace that restrains some of the sin, at least in their heart, lives, mind, actions, thought, word, deed, any of that, um, which then exposes them to the corruption of their sin. In other words, is sin just going to say, well, you know, I'm not going to take that path that's open to me. Sin is going to pursue more sin. Sin is going to pursue to become more and more and more debacle. Um, so this gives them over, it says, to their own lusts, so themselves, temptations of the world, and the power of Satan. So the world, the flesh, and the devil are always our enemies. And within the sinful person whom God has not yet regenerated, again, we don't know who those people are, so we pray and we preach to everyone uh, so that God's word can reach some of those people and regenerate them. God works through means. But in those who it doesn't, God may withdraw his grace, common grace, from them that they go farther into sin. Now, what would that maybe look like? Well, maybe someone who has a hesitation about some type of, you know, they hate people, hate people, hate people, but would never murder somebody. Well, maybe that is in a sense loosed from them and they get so angry someday that they finally murder somebody. And then it becomes, well, that wasn't too bad. I'm going to do it again. And then again, you know, that the common grace that in most people would refrain them from such a horrendous act in others, it's, you see that they clearly do not have that restraint why not they're just not smart enough no god's common grace restrains the evil of this world and as that restraint is released those people will fall more and more into sin follow the temptations of the world and obviously into the power of satan so how does this work then it says well then whereby it comes to pass that they are hardening themselves even under the same means which God uses for the softening of others. So you you see this all the time. Maybe you don't recognize it. You, you see a street preacher somewhere, and he's preaching the word of God. And as a Christian, you see that, and you're like, wow, okay, God's word being preached unto an indiscriminate crowd of people, and maybe hopefully somebody will be reached. But an unbeliever sees that, or experiences that or walks along and hears this street preacher they're not encouraged they're not exhorted to do better to them it excites the wrath and sin within them to even want to strike out against that street preacher throw throw something at them you know or or, or even try to come up and punch them or something you know i, I don't know um but those kinds of things. So, so the same means, preaching the gospel in some street corner that God may use by his Holy Spirit to reach someone is the exact same means that upon sin would harden, further harden somebody else. Uh, John Calvin always used the illustration of this in, in the stream of like sunlight. So you, you have the hot sun on a summer day. Well, that same sunlight will make a corpse stink. You know, it, it starts to dry it out and the juices of a corpse start to, to uh, I don't know, steam off of it and it just gives off a worse odor than if it had been cold and frozen and untouched by sunlight. You know, but the sun, it, it excites that and it makes it stink even more. But the same sunlight gives life to plants, gives us vitamin D. It, it, it it's encouraging life in other things. So Calvin would say that's the same way God's word and his spirit work. That as he's working in, to, and from, and around the world, it, it'll, ex it'll bring forth life in some places. But in other places, it'll excite death and, and the pains in which other people hate Christianity and despise God, and it'll bring those things to bear where they harden themselves even more. That's it for this lesson. Uh, running long on time. Didn't expect it to be this long. Um, but God bless. Take care. We'll see you next time for the last section, section 7 of chapter 5 on Providence. And then we'll see what's next. So join us then. Take care. Goodbye. God bless.